Hey, welcome back to my new video. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to make an Iron Man hot VFX in After Effects. So first of all, you have to shoot your subject and bring your subject as close as possible to the camera and make sure that you use a tripod. And you don't move your head too much because you have to pretend as if you're inside a helmet. And to sell the effect even more, I use a red light that shines directly on my face and the hot elements that I will be using later will also be uh, red hot. And that way the lights coming from that hot elements is casting the lights on my face. So that sells the effect even more. So let's go inside After Effects and let's start compositing everything together. Let's go. All right, here I have the footage. I'm gonna drag and drop this inside the new composition icon and control K on the keyboard and I'm gonna change this composition settings to main comp. Hit OK. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the footage. I'm gonna go and select this ellipse tool. I'm gonna draw a mask around this, the face. Doesn't need to be super precise. The whole idea here is to mask out the face. So maybe I am going to turn off this transparency and I'm gonna feather this, right? So right click and I'm gonna track mask and go to the tracker and you can change the mask to face tracking outline only. Select that and you can just hit this analyze forward. So it's gonna track the mask path so it's gonna do, all right, so once you are done with that, you can just select the mask, hit F, and I'm gonna feather this, and maybe I'm going to collapse this, and go to expansion, and maybe I'm gonna expand it inside, and I'm gonna play with expansion and feather both. All right, so it's gonna be something like this, maybe, yep something like this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this footage control D to duplicate and hit M I'm gonna delete the mask I think we're gonna draw a mask on the face eyes something like this because we need some light signing on the face so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add lumetri lumetri color and I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go go inside basic correction and I'm gonna change the exposure to maybe two and hit F to feather it. I'm gonna feather it out. So that looks like lights shining on the face. You can see that much better. So once you are happy with that, I can just go ahead and pre-compose. Maybe I'm gonna select all of this and maybe I'm gonna move it to the left side because the footage is not at the center and yeah I can just center it somewhere here and I'm gonna pre-compose this so maybe I'm gonna off this at the title action safe control shift and C and I'm going to rename these footage move all attributes and hit OK. Right, so that's the main footage now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna track the camera, go to the first frame, make sure you're at the full resolution and track the camera. So we're gonna wait for After Effects to track the camera. Meanwhile, I wanna talk about my course, which is Beyond Premiere, a beginner's guide to After Effects. If you are a Premiere Pro user and you're just starting out with After Effects, this course is for you. And I'm giving away a discount for the course and you can use this coupon MD2025 to avail the discount. A link will be there in the description down below. All right, now you can see that the camera has been tracked. You can just click on the create camera here and it's gonna create a camera. Okay, let's go to project and I have some hot elements. I'm going to drag and drop this inside the timeline. You can make your own, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just using these free assets. And let's make this at 3D. And it's a black background, so I'm gonna go and toggle the switch and change this blending mode to add. 
and I'm gonna skate it down. If you play it back now, you can see that. That's very, very nice. All right, let's move this somewhere here. Maybe let me just rotate it like this. And we're gonna change the color of this hut later on because like I said before, to sell the effect even more, I use some red lights on my face. So I have to change this hut to red, right? So I'll do that later on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-compose this hut one, Control Shift and C, and I'm gonna set this to move, leave all attributes. I'm gonna hit OK and go inside this pre-comp. And what I'm gonna do is duplicate this, Control D to duplicate. First of all, let me just change this blending mode to add as well. And maybe I'm going to add, make this at 3D. And I'm gonna move the other one, hit P, set the position down. Maybe I'm gonna skate it down somewhere here. And if I go back to the main comp, you can see some depth here, but I think we have to turn on this little switch to see that, right? So you can see that you have some depth here. Okay, so let's put that for now. And let's go ahead and use this HUD 2. I'm gonna drag and drop it here. And I'm gonna do the same for this. Set this to add. And I'm gonna make this at 3D layer, and I'm gonna skate it down somewhere here, move it here, and maybe I'm gonna rotate it somewhere here, and yeah, something like this, and move it somewhere around here. Precompose this again, Control Shift and C, and leave all attributes, hit OK, and I'm gonna go inside this HUD 2, and I'm gonna do the same, but this time I am going to select the hot layer and I'm gonna select this ellipse tool and I'm gonna draw uh, an ellipse here hold down shift so that you have a perfect circle maybe I'm gonna extract this part here right so I have this and what I'm gonna do is duplicate it hit M to bring up the mask and set this mask to subtract and I'm gonna rename this to inside and I'm gonna rename these to outside right so I will enable the 3d for both of them and change the blending mode to add and I'm gonna select the inside hit P and I move it down to Z axis so that we have some depth. If you go to the main comp here, and I'm going to turn on this collapse transformation, and there you have some depth like that. All right, so that's really cool. And maybe I'm gonna scale it up, something like that. You know, it totally depends on your taste. If you wanna scale it up or down, you know, you can do whatever you want, like, you know, wherever, wherever you want to place these elements. So just for the sake of this tutorial, let me just put it like this. And let's go ahead and import another one, which is that number three. I'm gonna drag and drop it here, simple as that. Make it the 3D layer, change the blending mode to add. And I'm gonna skate it down. This time I'm just gonna put it somewhere around here, skate it down. Or maybe you can just duplicate a few copies. You know, just skate it down. Just add some variation. Something like this. You can just be creative with this. All right, so let's put it like this for now. And I'm gonna drag another one, which is the last one, HUD 4. And I'm gonna do the same, make it the 3D change this blending mode to add and maybe I'm gonna scale it down a touch somewhere here and you can just adjust this and maybe this time I'm gonna hit P and bring it towards the camera 
and maybe scale it down. The reason why I am doing this is that we need some parallaxing between these hot elements, right? So right now we have it <clears throat> on the same z-axis, but we want this, the last one, to be a little bit far away from the camera so that when the head moves around, you have some parallaxing going on around the, you know, overlay, the text overlays and the background huts that we have here. So in that way, it looks much cooler, I think. All right, so let's go ahead and change the color of these huts, right? So let's select the first one. And let me go ahead and just add hue and saturation. And I'm also going to add a glow. Glow. And also a Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur, right? So let's turn off the glow and the Gaussian blur for now. And let's just work with this hue and saturation. So I'm gonna check this colorize and I'm gonna set this saturation to 100. And you can tweak the color wheels and find the color that you want. For me, I think I'm okay with this because, because the lights that are casting on my face is red. So I have a red here. And, and if you zoom in here, slide this colorized lightness to the negative values. That way you have all the elements covered in red. If you slide it up, you can see it's turning white. And if you add to the negative values, maybe a negative 50. Yes, that's great. Maybe even more than that. Yep, 60 seems to be fine. And let's go and add a glow. And let's go collapse this glow. And you can see the before and after. I can just add the radius, something like this, or maybe intensity, I think. That's fine. And I'm going to add a Gaussian blur, slight Gaussian blur. Check this edge repeat pixels. And maybe I'm gonna add, say, 10. I can just lower the glowness. I think the glowness is too high. Let me set this to one and, I don't know, maybe, I think the threshold needs to be 60 to 1 and maybe when you move it down a little bit, maybe the blurness, the Gaussian blur is too much, maybe I'm going to make it 10. A subtle, a subtle blur here. Let's just make it glow even more. Yeah, maybe 5. Yep. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna copy these effects, control C to copy, and I'm gonna paste it on the HUD 2. And you can see if you play it back now, you can see that, that's really, really cool. And you can just copy and paste it on these HUDs, control V. And the last one on number four, and here I am going to increase the, the values of the blurness because we have these overlays far away from the subject, closer to the camera, so you have more shallow depth of field. So I'm gonna increase maybe 30. And yep, I think that's nice. And maybe I will just go inside, select this hut too, and maybe I'm gonna increase the blurness to maybe 10 or something like that. And yeah, so that it's not fully on focus because uh, if the CGI elements are too sharp, it does not look so much realistic to my eye at least. So make sure if you are compositing any CGI with live action, don't make your your CGI, you know, elements or anything, it may be 3D, be 2D, make it less sharpened so that it match with the live action footage, right? So that's what I'm trying to do right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new solid 
And I'm going to rename these to BG since you have a transparent background. I'm going to make this black and I'm going to make this here at the bottom, sit here at the bottom. And I'm going to go and pre-compose all this. Select all these HUD elements and Control Shift and C. And I'm going to rename these HUD elements and I'm going to hit OK. Once you hit that, you can just go and turn this a 3D layer and make check this collapse transformation so that everything stays in its place. And I'm going to go to the effects and presets and type in lens, LENS lens. And I'm going to CC lens. I'm going to add a CC lens here. And what I'm going to do is change this blending mode as well to add. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this 200 and I'm going to scale it up. And that adds a little bit of lens distortion. And I think that's, I think that sells the effect even more. That's the reason why I added it. And before you render out, make sure you turn on the motion blur for this layer and for the composition. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, go follow me. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. This is Motion Designer and I will see you in my next video. Take care.